Suppose we had a function f that mapped from some set x to some set y. And suppose also that the set c was a subset of the set b, which is a subset of the set y. Our goal in this video is to prove that the inverse image under f of the set c lives, that is to say, it is a subset of the inverse image of b under f. So we want to show that any point in the inverse image of C under F is also in the inverse image of B under F. So to prove this, we first let X be any point in the inverse image of C under F. So let X be in the inverse image of C under F, X is any point in this set, the inverse image of C under F. And our goal is to show that X is also in the inverse image of B under F, thus showing that any point that's in the inverse image of C under F is also in the inverse image of B under F, proving that the inverse image of C under F is a subset of the inverse image of B under F. So, what does it mean for a point X to be in the inverse image of C under F? That is, let's see if we can rephrase this statement right here, the statement that X is in the inverse image of C under F. But in order to rephrase this statement, we need to remind ourselves of the definition of the inverse image of some set under some function. In general, if I have some function G that maps from X to Y, and I have a set S that lives in Y, so S is a subset of Y, then the inverse image of S under G, the inverse image of S under G is a set that's in X, it's a subset of X, and it has the following definition. The set of all points in the domain of G, so in this case X, which gets sent by G to some point in S, so whose image under G is in S. So if I have some point A in the inverse image of S under G, then that means that G of A, by definition, must be in S, and vice versa. If I have some point G of B in the set S, then that means that B must be in the inverse image of S under G. So check out what we can do now. We know that X is in the inverse image of C under F. So that means by this definition and by what we've just talked about, that F of X is in the set C. But check this out. C is a subset of B. C is a subset of B. Every point in C is also in B. So that means that F of X is also in B. But again, check this out. That means that X is a point in the domain of F that gets mapped by F to a point in B. So therefore, that's, that's the same as saying, by definition of the inverse image of the set B, that's the same as saying that X is in the inverse image of the set B, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And we're done.